I'm Fernanda Viegas. I'm a senior researcher at Google, and Glass Ladder has asked me to talk about my journey, which has not been traditional. Uh, I'm originally from Brazil, and my background has absolutely nothing to do with technology. And yet, today, I'm a researcher in computer science at Google. So how did that happen? Um, so back at, when I was in Brazil, I had no idea what kind of major I wanted to, to do, what I wanted to go to a university for. And so uh, the thing about Brazil is that when you do your entrance exam to a university, you have to not only choose a university, so you do different entrance exams for each university, but then you also need to declare a major. And so you, you do that entrance exam for that school and that major, and so forth. And so I did this, and the problem was uh, I did it for chemical engineering, and then my first semester I decided, eh, I do not want to be an engineer, don't know what I want to be, but not an engineer. So I had to get out, that's how things work in Brazil. You, if you want to change your mind, you have to get out, wait another year, do another exam for, another, for whatever universities, and again, for what major. I did it, this three times. And three times I decided that's not what I want to do, whatever major I was doing. But I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So I ended up being an English teacher to little kids. I was like, maybe I'm not made for university. Maybe it's just not for me because I can't make up my mind. That's when an English teacher of mine said, hey, why don't you try a scholarship to a bachelor's degree in the US? And I'm like, why would I leave my country to go to another country to still not know what I want to do? And that's, that's when she said, well, because in the US, that's where you can be undecided and you can change your mind as many times as you want. And I was like, that exists in the world. So long story short, I ended up coming to the US and I did change my major. I ended up doing graphic design and art history. Uh, and thought I would be a graphic designer for the rest of my life. And yet, when I was about to graduate from graphic design and art history, despite loving graphic design, I was just like, ah, I don't know, I don't think that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. But again, I did not know what I wanted to do. That's when I heard about this place called the Media Lab at MIT. And it's a very interdisciplinary program where they bring in musicians, psychologists, teachers, um, artists, designers uh, who were interested in working with technology. And I knew very little about technology, but the notion of a program that brought all these different people together and technology really spoke to me. So I put together the best portfolio I could of my graphic design work. And I tried my best to learn how to program between finishing my undergrad and applying to the media lab. To my utter shock, MIT accepts me. I'm sitting here thinking, they made a mistake. Any point now, they're gonna figure out they made a mistake, they're gonna kick me out of MIT. Meanwhile, I'll work with it. So I was, I was incredibly grateful and excited. I ended up going to the Media Lab. Um, I ended up doing my master's and a PhD at the Media Lab. It was not easy, by the way. Uh, learning how to program and learning how to program at MIT was one, one of the hardest things I ever had to do. I literally cried many, many, many times, had nightmares and everything. But I persisted. And eventually, um, I ended up um, really enjoying uh, working with computational design, uh, creating. So then I started blending my graphic design background and computation. And I started doing things like data visualization, where you start to visualize lots of data, so lots of numbers. You transform those numbers into images. And that makes it very easy for people anywhere around the world to just understand a lot of statistics, a lot of data patterns. You don't need a PhD in statistics or computer science. You just understand because these are things that you can understand visually. And so I ended up graduating from MIT, joining IBM Research as a researcher. That's when I realized, I'm like, oh, I actually really like this idea of doing research and creating new things and creating new techniques for visualizing data. 
Um, and then uh, had a really nice set of four years at IBM Research. Uh, started working with uh, this colleague of mine, Martin Wattenberg, who, is, who happens to be a mathematician and is just a genius in the data visualization world and we hit it off really well and we started working together really well he had I he was my boss and our work was going so well at IBM that we decided you know maybe we should just leave IBM and do a startup so Martin and I literally left IBM research to do a startup in my living room <laughs> and so it was the two of us literally out of my living room doing a startup and the idea with the startup was to do data visualization for clients they could be journalism clients they could be corporate clients they could be government clients whoever has tons of data who needs to better understand their data and we were starting to gain traction we were working with some um, journalists we were working with some professors and then four months into our world of startup that was our new life. The phone rings and it was Google. And we thought, wow, Google is going to be our first huge client. This is going to be so exciting. And then Google was like, no, 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 you don't understand. Well, we, we want you to join Google because we want you to do data visualization uh, here at Google. Um, we, were, we were very flattered, but we were we said, you know, we just left a, uh, a corporation, we're doing our startup, uh, we really like having th this tiny, tiny startup. Um, thank you, but no thank you. Uh, and so a few weeks passed, uh, and then the phone rings again, and it's Google again, and they're like, come talk to us, we really want to talk to you about data visualization, let's continue the conversation. We were thinking, sitting there thinking, but maybe they decided to be our clients, finally. Um, they had a different idea. They wanted to acquire us. Actually, acquire us, which means when you acquire a, a small company, not necessarily for any product, because remember, we had just started, we had no product, but you acquire a company for its talent. Um, and so basically, that's what happened. We joined Google. Uh, I've been there for eight years now. Um, Martin and I co-lead this amazing research group at Google. Uh, and we also co-lead one of Google's initiatives around, uh, it's called PEAR, People Plus AI Research, which is really exciting. Um, we work with amazing people. We get to do really, really pioneering work. and just to go back to where I started, if you look back at where I started and how many dead ends I had re reached before getting here, you would never, never have guessed, I would never have guessed that I would be working in high tech at a place like Google. Um, and so just a few thoughts to leave you with, which is, you know, even if sometimes your path looks kind of like this and it doesn't make sense, I think as long as you follow what's true to you, what you actually want to do, chances are you're going to end up in a really good place, in a really healthy place. And I think that's what matters. Don't end up, don't do a path that is super linear if it's really bothering you and that doesn't bring you happiness. Really invest in what's true to you. That's it. Thank you.